Good afternoon. You know, it's a beautiful fall afternoon here in Southeast Texas. And I wanted to address some of the craziness uh, that has surrounded the month of September and some of the speculation, some of the thoughts about it. And I want to just explain what I believe happened. You know, there's a lot of speculation across the board, whether it come from secular sites or Christian sites, about the month of September and what it held for the world. And some of those speculations actually come from New Age, the New Age movement, uh, people who are not believers in Jesus Christ, that they believe that September, especially uh, September 27th, would be a, an awakening day where people would ascend to the fifth dimension of consciousness. And one of these guys was the name of Matt Kahn, K-A-H-N. And you can just simply look him up in YouTube, uh, look up September 27th, 2015, Matt Kahn, and you will see more than you ever care to about some of the things that were being speculated about September. Um, if you been living in a cave, then you may not be aware that it was the fourth blood moon last night. Um, so we have those speculations about what the fourth blood moon, what the four blood moons would be, uh, the two blood moons that were last year on Jewish feast days of Passover and Tabernacles, and then again this year on the Jewish feast days of Passover and ta Tabernacles. So there was a lot of that speculation. And then also, if you've been living in a cave, you've never heard of the Shemitah or the Harbinger, which was some work that was done by Rabbi Jonathan Kahn that basically predicted financial collapse to happen on September 13th. So when we take it all together, um, these are just some of the things that were being discussed. And many people had said the Lord had showed them that financial collapse would happen on September 13th or before and that we would be moving into a period of global economic collapse right now, leading up to a global currency reset in October. We also had speculation about the Large Hadron Collider, also known as CERN, that it would be opening up a portal to a new dimension back uh, on the 23rd of this month, and that aliens would come through. We had speculation that September 15th, the United Nations in their 70th General Assembly opening would uh, declare a Palestinian state. We had the Pope coming, addressing Congress and addressing the United Nations. Prophets of the Lord, and I use that in quotes, had said that the Lord had showed them, and insiders had said that the Lord was allowing them to reveal some secrets, that there would be a declaration of a new world order by the Pope in his address to United Nations. We also have numerous prophets of the Lord and other speculations and quote-unquote whistleblowers who had said that there was going to be a massive meteor strike on the 23rd and the 24th of September. There was also some personal things that happened. Uh, I had a man who I respect had told me he had heard from the Lord that the Lord would show up on the 27th of September, that Jesus Christ would show up physically, bodily on the 27th of September. And that the Lord had showed him that. There are also numerous other prophets who had said that things were going to happen. And again, I use quotes prophets because we know what the Word of God says. Is if they prophesy something, it doesn't come to pass that we should not fear them. But that this was going to be a time of darkness, beginning on the 24th of September, that the tribulation would start, possibly. And there were so many other things surrounding the month of September. So I want to explain, first of all, what I did. I have been down this road before as a new believer back in the early 80s I began studying prophecy and I've been through this gamut before the date setting and all the things that surround it and back in 1994 a man who seemed to be a, a great man of God had put forth a prophecy that on Thursday, June 9th, 1994, that God would rip the evil out of this world. And that was my first foray into date setting. And I'll admit, on Thursday, June 9th, 1994, I sat around and I prayed all day long. Because I was ready for this event because the man seemed so convinced and he seemed so convincing. And nothing happened. And my dad always taught me a, a saying, and many of you have heard it, fool me once shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And so when all this stuff started happening around September 
2015, I really started to take a good look at it. And the evidence did seem overwhelming that something must be in the works because of all these events that are just colliding together. But what I did was I prayed for discernment. Uh, Hebrews 5.14 says this, Solid food is for the mature, for those who have had their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. And good from evil can be in any event in our life. It could be uh, someone deceiving you, or it could be a spirit, a lying spirit, trying to trick you and to tell you that something's going to happen or something won't happen, and the reverse is true. Knowing the history of date setting and knowing how many dates have come and gone, I really prayed about this September. I prayed long and hard, and my family and I even had some plans to prepare, and I'll talk about preparing in a little bit. So we prayed about what would happen, if anything, in September, and we prayed for this for about three years, because Proverbs 22.3 says this, the prudent sees danger and hides himself, but the simple go on and suffer. And you know, I believe any man that loves his family wants to prepare them for the worst. And that's what I did. I first wanted to see what God was saying here. And so I asked God for insight. I asked God for his counsel regarding these events in September. Was it really going to happen? Were we going to face economic collapse? Because frankly, that would have changed the way I lived my life. Or was this probably hype? Or was it a deception? And I asked the Lord to teach me through His Spirit and through circumstances and through His Word. Is something really going to happen? Or is this all phony? And the Lord showed me over the course of several months that nothing would happen. And it was the reason why I did not prepare my Sunday school class. Had I honestly thought something was going to happen, I would have been announcing it to my Sunday school class. I would have been announcing it to the church. I would have been on YouTube announcing it. But the Lord had pretty much showed me that, no, this is going to come and go. But there's a purpose behind what happened. So I prayed and prayed and prayed. And, you know, the Lord revealed some things to me and one of the things he revealed to me back in June 2nd and you see I have my, my journal here that I journal in I had a meeting with the man who had told me that the Lord would bod uh, bodily show up on September 22nd and I want to read to you what I wrote on June 2nd when I came home from the meeting I said very discouraged today the meeting with blank did not go as I had hoped I find it very probable that he has not heard from the Lord, but that in fact, he has heard of his own imagination. It was a sense that I got from him and from the fact that he was confused in his story. I see so many of these things regarding September. It's the start of a Jubilee year. It's the end of the Shemitah year. There are the blood moons. There are other prophets who point to September being something big. But now I'm wondering if it's all a lie. It's a bunch of bandwagoners jumping on board because they sense momentum. In Blank's message, there was confusion. And because it's a conflicting message to me, it's troubling. And this means that if this vision of his is false, this dream is false, it's likely that the others are as well. So... That was June 2nd, but we, I still wasn't totally convinced, and I wasn't totally convinced until September 13th passed, and the Shemitah passed us by, the end of the Shemitah that had been done by Jonathan Com. There, there's still books at Walmart about the Shemitah cycle, and at that point I realized that this was all deception that I knew nothing was going to happen. All of these events that have been prophesied, and I only listed about seven or eight of them. There are dozens of things. There's a video out there called 27 Things That Will Happen in September. And so I realized it was all deception. But I want to talk about that. Many think it was hype, but I don't believe it was hype. Because we've never seen this level of hype before. 2012 came close, the end of the Mayan calendar but nothing like this. 
And I want to say there's a lot of people who are right for the wrong reasons. And they were right that nothing happened, but for the wrong reasons. And the wrong reasons was they just assumed nothing's ever going to happen. Or they don't believe in this sort of thing. They don't think God works this way. And some of these people are Christians. They weren't right because they sat down and sought the Lord to find guidance. Holy Spirit, teach me. Do I need to prepare my family? Holy Spirit, teach me. Are these things real? Are these things going to happen? Give me wisdom and instruction. They just wrote it off. Ah, that's bunk. Don't believe it. Well, I'm telling you, that works for a while. But eventually you're going to write something off that is going to be true. And unless you are discerning, unless you have your powers of discernment constantly practiced to sharpen your discernment, to discern good from evil, to know when the Lord is speaking and know when the enemy is speaking, you will fall for these things. Or you will fall for the lie that God doesn't reveal anything to his servants, the prophets anymore, which we know is not true. And also what is possible is you do not practice your discernment. You may think the Lord is telling you something. And it turns out is the enemy whispering in your ear. So what I think happened is what I call gravy training. There were two well-intentioned men, John Hagee and Jonathan Kahn, that thought that they found some cycles recurring throughout history and linked them to biblical events. And what happened is, is that everybody jumped on board. There was some meat thrown in the water and piranhas started a feeding frenzy. And everybody jumped on board and everybody thought, well, Jonathan Kahn is a godly man and John Hagee is a godly man. And so if they heard from the Lord, then it must be true. So maybe I can hear from the Lord too. And what it was, was the devil whispered in their ear. It has caused massive deception. Uh, I do not think it was hype. I don't think it was just the figment of man's imagination that caused a bunch of hype. I honestly believe it was a deception of the enemy. That all of this stuff surrounding September, all of these false predictions that have now been proven wrong, was a deception. And it was a plan of the enemy to, first of all, make Christians weak. There's a lot of Christians right now who are very discouraged because nothing happened. Because they had seen all of these quote-unquote godly men and women, people who said they were prophets, and they put forth predictions and nothing's happened. And so now they're very discouraged. And now there are also a lot of people out there who are unwilling to listen to anything said by Christians. You should see some of the comments on the videos, the videos that were predicting things in September. You should see the worldly comments from the people who are calling people names and mocking them. And it reminds me of 2 Peter 3, where he says, Knowing this, in the last days, scoffers walking after their own lust will come. And they will say, what is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all these things continue on as they were from the beginning of creation. That is happening today. And that is happening now in magnitudes greater numbers because people thought they heard from the Lord and they spoke a prophecy and it didn't come to pass. And now all these people who have been sitting back are coming forward and go, where is the sign of his coming? you guys don't know what you're talking about and they're mocking them all you have to do is just some of the searches on some of these September videos and you will see the amount of ridicule that is happening so what's going to happen from this well the first thing I think is going to happen is there are going to be ministries collapse because of this Satan has used this deception to slander the name of Christ and there are a lot of ministries that are going to fall because of it uh, one particular ministry called the Prophecy Club who I've listened to, I don't agree with everything they say, but they were a very vibrant ministry before Y2K, and they went all in on Y2K. Well, they kind of had rebounded, but they also went all in in September of this year, and now nothing has happened, and they've done a lot of work on Thus Saith the Lord, this prophet said that this was happening in September, begging people to buy food, begging people to be prepared, and now nothing has happened. I believe that ministry is finished. And the thousands of people they had led to Christ back in the 90s has dwindled to hundreds, and now their witness is gone. And that's, they're not the only ones. There will be other prophetic ministries, people who deal with Bible prophecy, who are going to fail. There are going to be people who are laughingstocks. John Hagee's got a lot to explain. 
Jonathan Kahn has a lot to explain. And a lot of pastors who gave them a lot of voice, who opened their pulpits to them, have a lot to explain to their congregations. So the testimony of Jesus Christ has suffered slander because of it. But we have to remember this. One of the things we need to remember is what Peter follows up in in 2 Peter 3, verse 9. That we must remember that God is not slow, as some people count slowness. But he is patient, not willing that any should perish. And we have to remember that God's plan is not our plan. His ways are not our ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. And even when it looks like evidence is pointing to a conclusion that cannot be debunked, that it has to happen this way, we have to remember that not always is that the case. And September is a classic example. And I don't want people to fall into the trap of thinking that you're Israel in the desert and that if calamity does come, that man is just going to fall from heaven. See, God does provide for his people. No one can convince me otherwise. But what we need to remember is that the prudent see danger and they prepare for it. We need to remember that if God always provided for his people, that there would never have been a need to put a watchman on the wall. There would have never have been the need for God to tell Ezekiel that he was a watchman in Ezekiel chapter 3 and Ezekiel 33, and to blow the trumpet and to warn people. If God supernaturally always provided protection and provided food, that we were, all we had to do is just trust in the Lord. Let me let me remind you, if you believe that this, and then you may be getting upset that I'm saying this, but let me remind you, there are millions of people across the world who have a better relationship with Jesus Christ than you or I. They are more faithful in their prayers. They are closer to the Lord. And this morning they got up and watched their children starve. Need I remind you that during the Civil War, there were numerous hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of godly men and women in the South who loved the Lord their God with all their might and lived godly lives who went hungry. The prudent sees danger and they prepare. If you are of the opinion that I don't have to prepare for anything because God will take care of me, you know what? He does. He is capable of that. But at the same time, you've got a problem with history and you've got a problem with real world events if you believe that. And if you're arrogant enough to think that God will always drop food from heaven for me and I don't have to look at look for danger and see it approaching and prepare, you're foolish. And you're not a good husband and you're not a good father. Because the prudent sees danger. What we have to do is have the gift of discerning. We have to know when to discern what the Lord is saying. Um I think we'd be foolish to believe that the gravy train of free money in, in the country will continue forever. And I think all you have to do is think logically. When the money stops, when the food stamps stop, when the government assistance stops, what happens to our society? When there's a run on the stores. And that has happened even during hurricanes. That has happened uh, during you know, ice storms in the Northeast where there's no food because average supermarket has three days of food. So if you're not preparing in some manner to support your family during a hard time, you're foolish. You're foolish. So we need to remember to be discerning. We need to remember to always weigh everything against the Word of God. And most importantly, we need to remember to be those wise virgins of uh, the wise virgins of Matthew 25. They had their lamps full. They were prepared, and we need to be prepared. We need to prepared for, be prepared for any circumstance. But above all, if you're not prepared because you don't know Jesus Christ, you need to know, first of all, there is a God that loves you, and he loves you so much he sent his son to die for you. And the reason why he had to send his son is because you're a sinner, and you are separated from God because of your sin. But that God in heaven loved you so much from the foundation of the earth, from the beginning of time, that he planned that his son would be the sacrifice, the perfect sinless sacrifice. And all you have to do is place your faith in him. I hope that 
all of that, the predictions that have been predicted that fail to pass do not cloud your judgment about who God is because God was not in that. The devil was in that. And part of the devil's plan regarding September was to make you think that all of this is foolishness. And it wasn't. And it's not. There is a God who loves you. And he wants a relationship with you. And he wants you to spend eternity with him. But you're a sinner. You have fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages you earn because of your sin is death. And you need a savior. And his name is Jesus Christ. And so, just simply comment. Send a, a text to me if you need to know Jesus Christ as your savior. Because if you don't, you need him. Be blessed.